This tutorial is part of our full stack React Django DRF channels project, DJ Chat. You can watch this tutorial and many more from our YouTube course playlist, or the whole course, including access to additional resources from our Udemy course. The Udemy course link, which provides the best price for the course, is in the video description. Right then, so let's go ahead and refactor the model so that we can support icons and banners in the Django models. We saw in the preview that the category had some sort of icon associated to it. So let's go ahead and create an icon field uh, so that we can associate it with an icon. Now, this icon is going to be an SVG, and I think it isn't supported by the I've got traditional um, image field that we're going to use for the banner and the icon in the server. So because of that, we'll use the file field. So it just allows us to expand our knowledge on the different field types. Um, file, we don't have to do this, of course, but um, that's the approach we're going to take. So it should be models. So file field. So here we need to specify where we're going to save the files or at least we can specify here where to save the files. In addition to that, potentially we want to make it so that we don't have to include this. So we could add null and blank if we wanted to equals true. Again, optional. You might want to make it mandatory that someone has to upload an icon. Um, we have to be careful with that, of course, because if we're going to build a front end which has an icon, we want to make sure everything is still lined up. So we're probably going to need to ensure that if a category doesn't have an icon, that there is a default icon we can use. So we're going to build a new function here to specify where the files are stored. So category um, icon um, upload pass. Uh, so we're going to call it category icon upload path here. Um, so we're taking instance and the file name. We might need that. And then we go ahead and return the actual location of where we're going to store this image. So it's going to be category slash. And then we're going to need the instance ID. So we're going to store it into a folder called category. And then we're going to categorize, or we're going to then um, format, I'll start again. We're then going to create a new folder related to that particular category, so instance ID. So the folder is going to be called whatever the instance ID is, whatever the category ID is. And then we go ahead and inside of there. Now, the thing is here that this category might have multiple different resources connected to it. So we'll create a folder inside of the instance ID. Inside of here, we'll create a a category um, icon folder and then inside of there we go ahead and specify the file name okay let's just tidy this up of course we don't need that there let's finish that okay so let's just finish this up so we don't need those doubles there there we go so now we can specify here in the file field, the upload. So upload to equals, and that's going to be category icon upload path, comma. I had a comma at the end here, so we build a nice presentation. Now, of course, we're going to need some icons, right? So if you head over to fonts.google.com slash icons, we can access some different icons here, right? So just to test this out, uh, we'll go ahead and maybe change the weight to 600. Um, okay, so let's just try something out. We've got home here. So we are given a few different options. We can download it as an SVG. Sorry, it's off screen. Um, but on the bottom right hand corner, it will say PNG or SVG. You can't see it there, but it will be on yours. Uh, so just go ahead and download it as an SVG. So that should download. Right, so we are going to need to now make some changes here. Uh, so let's go ahead and make sure we manage .py, make migrations. Now, spell that wrong. Now notice here, it does specify we have some issues. The media URL setting must end with a slash, so just a few different media URL needs to end with a slash. There we go. Let's just change that in your settings. There we go, so make migrations, now works okay. So let's go ahead and migrate. 
And there we go. So we've made those changes. So let's just turn the server back on. All right, let's just go back into administration. So that's uh, your local host slash admin. You should already have a username and password for it. Admin, admin, um, if you've set it up that way. So let's go into now the category. So we can now see in category one, we have an option here for an icon. So let's go ahead and choose a file. So open up to where you saved the PN, yeah, the SVG, sorry, it was downloaded from Google icons there. So you can see that's been loaded in, press save. And there we go. We now should have a an SVG image associated to the category. So now when you head back into the Django project folder, you can see the media folder and it now utilizes the folder structure that we set out in the model. What we've seen so far is the default behavior. We upload an image, it gets stored in a folder. Two potential undesirable effects is that if we were to upload a new file, then that file will then also be stored in this new folder related to the category, and it would not delete the previous image. Now, sometimes that's not the case that you want to delete the previous image and that's okay, but more often than not, you probably would want to replace it potentially, or at least it's going to store you it's going to store you. It's going to help you reduce the amount of storage potentially that you need to pay for. Now, in addition to that, if we were to delete the category, the image would potentially remain. So there are two actions that potentially we want to create. One being that if we upload a new image, we want to delete the previous image. And two, potentially when we delete the category, we also want to delete the image. Now that by all means isn't everything or all the actions that you want to take, but that will hopefully give you a good starting point. So let's go ahead and think about how we're going to achieve this. So two actions that we're going to try and develop. One is that if we were to save another image, then we want to delete the previous one. So for this, we could use or override the save method here in the model. So whenever we save something in this model, this method will be initiated. So what we're going to do in here is we're going to check to see, for example, if there is an image already existing. If there is, then we're just going to delete that before we then upload a new image. Okay, so that's the plan. So imagine we're going to save a new category. So we type in the category details into the form, press save, and then the function here, the save function will get initiated. So the first thing we need to do is check to see if this is a new category we're creating or whether we're just updating a new category, because that's important. This save function will be initiated on both of those actions, whether you're saving a new category or whether you're just up dating a category. And of course, if we're updating a category, we want to capture the fact we are doing that because we know then we need to check to make sure that we remove the previous image if we need to do that. So self to ID, this new data that we're trying to save, will get passed into this new function here, or we we'll initiate this new function. So if the data does have an ID, that will mean that the the category that we're trying to save information about already exists. So therefore, we're just trying to update an existing category. So if self ID, so if an ID does exist, then we now know we're working with an existing category that's been being updated. So we want to check to make sure that a new image hasn't been uploaded. So this equals, so we're going to say get object um, or 404. So we're going to get a single object. What we're going to do now is we're going to query the cat category table and we're going to grab the data related to the image that the category, sorry, that we're trying to update. Okay, so just finish off this query. So category, and then we're going to run a little filter here. So if, oh no, so ID equals self.id. Okay, so all we've done here is we're going to initiate a query on the category table, and we're going to filter out where self dot, where id equals the id of the category that we're trying to update. 
So we now have a copy of the existing category and I've changed this to existing just to hopefully make it a little bit easier to understand. So we've grabbed the existing category out of the category table. Right, so now what we need to do, we need to compare the icon, the existing icon image that's stored to the image potentially that's being uploaded because someone might be updating an instance of category. So let's give that a go. So if, so we're going to say if the exist if the existing um, icon is not equal to the self remember this is the icon that's potentially being uploaded icon so if they don't match then what we need to do is delete the existing so this or existing so the existing icon we need to delete so we use uh, save equals false. So we use uh, save equals false at this point to prevent the model from being saved at this point. We will call um, save method later to update the whole thing in the database. And of course, that's exactly what we need to do next. We just need to now save everything up. So make sure you use a colon there and now we just need to save so super uh, category self uh, dot save and just pass in any arguments quarks there we go okay so let's not forget to import the get object or 404 this is just a shortcut for creating a a query if you like that's going to return one object uh, or else it's going to return a 404 so we'll find that um where are we going to find that from i think the django shortcuts let's go ahead and import get object or 404 or get object okay uh, just finally, quick looking at this code, the save needs to be after the if, the second if here. Um, there we go. So now we can test this out. So what I've done is I've renamed the image that we downloaded previously from home, field zero, blah, 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 to just new.svg. And I've already chosen that. So I just need to press save. So hopefully that's now been updated to the new file there. Yep. So now when I go back in and have a look at the images, you can see the previous image has been deleted and the new image has now replaced that. So the second functionality here, we want to make sure that if we delete a category, we also delete the image. So again, this is just an example. Uh, so let's go ahead and add this to just underneath the save function here. So here we're going to be utilizing Django signals. So in essence, if you're not familiar with Django signals, is that when certain events take place, for example, on the model here, we can capture um, or we can, yeah, we can capture the fact that that event has taken place and we can then go ahead and perform additional tasks. So a delete is an event that might occur on this table. So we can look out for a delete event and then we can perform additional tasks. And that's exactly what we're going to do here. So what we need to do is set up a, a receiver. So we're going to say models.signals. So we're going to capture um, the delete signal, if you like, or capture when something may be deleted from this model. And we specify a sender. So that's going to be server dot category so we're just specifying the category table let's just uh, finalize this import so we're going to from django dispatch and we're going to import uh, receiver there we go so let's define a new function uh, we're going to call this uh, we're going to call this category uh, delete files give that a go and we're going to need a uh, sender so the model class that sent the signal and uh, we're going to need the the instance that's the instance of the model that is about to be deleted and then we're going to need or we can then pass in uh, 
any keyword arguments. So now we're going to iterate over the fields, um, each field individually. And if we find a field name icon, then we know what to do. We then delete the image. So let's give that a go. So for uh, for field in it, the instance that's being deleted. So we're going to just loop over all the fields. And then we want to check or we want to look for the field name uh, icon. That's what we're trying to find. So we can then delete the image. And then, of course, we want to delete the image. So we need to check whether there is an actual image that exists or not. So let's go file equals uh, get attribute and then instance uh, field name. OK, so then we can test to make sure that we have an image to delete. So if file, then we we'll just go for file dot delete. Um, then we don't want to save at this point. So save equals false. The model will be saved automatically after the signal has been processed. So we don't necessarily need to do anything at this point to save. And that's just about it. So let's give this a go. Let's go ahead and delete a category and see if this works. OK, so let's just make sure the server is turned on. Now let's just give this a go. So I just refresh the admin page again. It's just the admin site. If you've forgotten, it's 127001 colon 8000 slash admin and login. And then we'll just go over to categories. Let's um, delete category two. Actually, it doesn't have an image. Um, so let's delete category one for now. So we're just going to go ahead and well, just do it from here. Category one. Let's go ahead and delete that. And you can see because of the foreign key, this category is connected to multiple servers. So in actual fact, if we delete this category, we are also going to be deleting because we have that cascade effect in the model, set in the model. Uh, so if we go back into the models, if you've not seen that, in server models, already in models, um, down here we have the category and we've set the on delete to cascade and this is why it's deleting all these other items so that's not a problem for now yes for sure so we deleted that category so hopefully when we go back here and take a look now in our media folder you can see that the image has now been removed right so hopefully that gives you a baseline into some of the common tasks or common actions that you might want to take if you are working with images and you do want to remove them. Like I said, the benefit of removing the images rather than keeping them is that you don't end up with thousands upon thousands of images. Um, although this is a very small system now, you can imagine if this was scaled up, you would have thousands upon thousands of images potentially just doing absolutely nothing. And that would obviously potentially add up and be quite costly in terms of storage over time. 